This is a short tutorial for my second year lab class on handling exponential data sets. What I'm going to do is show you two ways of doing graphs so that you can extract some useful information from a cooked up data set um, and then you can apply this to your own experiments. So the data set I'm going to do use is essentially a dummy measurement of say you start a town and you put 1200 people in it and you measure the population every couple of decades what you'll find is that that population will grow and it will grow in an exponential way. So your population P can be modeled as being equal to some initial population P naught times an exponential of KT where T is the time and K is some factor that determines how fast your population grows. So you might have a data set that looks a little bit like this. Um, you measure time in years and population in number of people and you start out with 1200 people and that population grows and eventually it can become quite large. Here after 130 years we've got 5.6 million people. So the simplest approach to this is just to plot population um, versus time on a linear linear graph and if you do this you end up with something you can't get very far with and the main reason for that is that in the short time scale your population is very low compared to the population in the long time scale and so you end up with a graph that stays so low you can't really plot it meaningfully for a while and then just takes off like a rocket. Um, you can't really extract too much inf meaningful information from a graph like this. What you want to do is change the way that you plot your data so you can get access to the two parameters in the equation that you'd use to model the system one being P0, the starting population, and the other one being K, sort of the characteristic growth. This is very similar to doing a nuclear physics experiment where you would get half-life, for example, which would be that prefactor in the exponent. So the first approach to doing this is to plot the log of P against T. So essentially what you do is you take that equation, you take the log of both sides, and you break it up so that you end up with log of P equals log P0, which is the intercept, plus kt which will be the gradient of the straight line that you get in this fit. The tricky aspect of this is that you then have to go through and calculate log p. So you would now have an extra data column in your data set where you've calculated log p that you would then have to graph. For a small data set that's fine, it doesn't take much work. For a very big data set it's going to take you a while. So if you do a graph like this you'll have log p down one axis, t along the other axis. When you plot your data on this, you'll get a, you'll get a, a nice clean straight line, which you can then take the, take the gradient of. Um, basically what you do is you look for the maximum range of the line as you can get it, um, work out what the um, run over that region is, work out what the rise over that region is, and take the gradient as in the traditional way is the rise over the run. So you'll notice from this left axis that the rise will be in units of log p, so it will run from about 16 back to about 7 or so, and if you divide that by the number of years, you end up with a gradient that's 0 0.065, which will be that k in the um, exponential equation. You can also work out what your intercept at zero years is, it will be log of p, so you need to take e to the power of 7.1 and that will get you your starting population which is about 1200 people. Um, a somewhat better way to do it, especially if you've got large data sets, is to use log linear paper. So what you have is a linear scale across the bottom here and a log scale on the left hand side. And the main reason why I like using log linear paper is because you no longer have to calculate the log of all the numbers um, in your data set. The graph does it for you. So what you do is you start on this axis here and each time you cross into a sort of a new density of scale here, you go up by a factor of 10. So it'll be a thousand here, um, 10,000, 100,000, million, 10 million. And all you do is just plot your data, um, basically uh, t on this axis, p on this axis by finding where the relevant p is. And without having to do any extra calculations, you get a, a nice straight line in this graph, which you can then take 
the gradient of and you can take the intercept of. Now the reason why this turns out to be really easy is because the intercept down here will not be in log p, it will be p, so you can read um, p naught directly off the graph. It's 1200 and you can see it down here in the bottom corner. And taking the gradient is a little bit more to it. What you have to do um, on this sort of graph paper, they very nicely number the uh, bars up here. And so what you need to do to work out the run is you do it the same way as usual. You work out how far you go from your starting position to your ending position. In this case, it's 130 years. For your rise, what you need to do is work out where you start in one order and where you finish in another order. So what I do is number the orders from the bottom up. So this is order number one, order number two, order number three, order number four. And so your rise will be um, from about 7.9 in order four down to about 1.6 or so, just here, 1.6 or so in order one. So what you end up with doing is calculating the rise. And the way I got taught to do it, which is a really easy way to do it, is like this. So what you do is, um, the rise is just, 7.9 on order 4 minus 1.65 on order 1 and so this just becomes the log of 7.9 by 10 to the minus 4 divided by 1.65 by 10 to the minus 1 and you pop out here that this is 3.68 orders um, of rise and you can see that quite clearly in the graph right you go from order 1 so this is two or one order two order three orders and a bit of rise in that graph, so it makes sense. Um, so then the last thing you have to do to get the gradient is basically just divide the number of orders that you have as your rise divided by your run, and you divide it by an additional factor which is 0 0.434. And that 0 0.434 is basically just the base 10 log of E, and you do this because log paper uses base 10 and your exponential is in base E, and you need to make a conversion between the two. So just to, so to get your gradient, what you do is you take the number of orders of magnitude in your rise, divided by the run, divided by that conversion factor, and if you do this, sure enough, really easily, you pop out your 0.065, which is the exponent in your equation, and now you can build it all together and you have P equals 1200E 0.065T. So if I had a race between two students, one where they had to um, take the log and draw it on linear linear paper, and one who had to do it on log linear paper, the one on log linear paper will win because they don't have to calculate log p for every um, point in the column. And you just need one conversion factor to extract out your um, gradient directly from that graph. So just a comment for passing, because I know people outside my leg class will look at this video. Um, some of you will be going, well, why don't you just chuck it into a computer and get it to do a fit of the exponential graph? Um, the whole point here is to learn skills that enable you to still do physics without a computer. Um, it's often quite useful. You can be sitting in a meeting analyzing someone's data, and if you don't have a computer there to do a fit because you don't actually have the data, it's just printed on someone's paper. You're kind of stuck if you have to rely on a computer. Um, if you have the skills that enable you to on the fly from a piece of um, graph or somebody else's graph paper, um, work out what the gradient is and what the intercept is and how to arrive at values, you'll probably be the uh, most useful and smartest person in the room. So I think I'll, I'll end it there. Um, for my lab class, all of the graphs and all of the information that I just showed you here will be on the website so that you can have a closer look at it and perhaps for the folks on YouTube, I'll see if I can arrange a similar thing.